beginning here. Um, on uh, May 26th of 1997, at uh, 4.24 a.m., a 23-year-old a Tamika Means was, uh, was murdered on uh, East Elvin and Chelsea Place here in the city of Buffalo uh, while she was uh, sitting in the, the, her boyfriend's car. Um, her, the, the, the front seat passenger of, uh, of that car, um, saw the shooter, um, a composite sketch of the, uh, shooter was, uh, was done. And on June 26th of 1997, uh, an aunt of the victim said that the composite sketch looked like an individual by the name of Corey Epps. <clears throat> On July 30th, 1997, Corey Epps volunteered to appear in a lineup, saying that he had nothing to hide, he did not do it. Um, he appeared in a lineup and the front seat passenger picked him on the lineup. <clears throat> in uh, August of 1997, Corey Epps was indicted for second degree murder. The trial started on April 20th, 1998, and the trial was concluded on April 24th of 1998, and the jury came back with a guilty verdict on the uh, homicide charge. Uh, at trial, uh, Corey Epps' um, main defense was um, it was not him, and he had an alibi. He produced a receipt from Perkins Restaurant um, at the time that, uh, the, that, that uh, roughly the time that the murder took place and said that he was not there. He was at a Perkins Restaurant with his, uh, with his wife. <clears throat> um, it, uh, the jury, in any event, found him guilty. Um, four days after the guilty verdict, an anonymous letter um, was sent uh, to the court uh, and to and the, the, that the then defense lawyer produced. Um, the anonymous letter stated that someone else was responsible for the murder of Tamika Means. A motion was made to uh, hold off on the sentencing and to uh, to uh, uh, allow this evidence to come forward and perhaps have a new trial. Um, the judge denied that motion due to the fact that it was an anonymous letter and no one would <laughs> want to sign the letter. Um, <clears throat> on June 10th of 1998, Corey Epps was sentenced to 25 years to life. About two years later, on July 7th of 2000, uh, Corey Epps' new attorneys filed a motion with our office and the court saying that there was newly discovered evidence. The newly discovered evidence was the individual who wrote the anonymous letter now came forward with an affidavit and prepared a sworn affidavit saying that Corey Epps was not the individual who committed the homicide, that another individual did. Um, in addition to the um, affidavit was an affidavit also from a jailhouse informant who was willing to testify that another individual admitted to him that he committed the murder and not Corey Epps. Um, in addition to that, a third piece of evidence came forward back in 2000. The front seat passenger, who was the main eyewitness at trial, um, did an affidavit stating that the other person of interest looked very similar to Corey Epps. Um, she did, to be fair, she, she, she did not change her testimony though. She still maintained that it was Corey Epps, but at least she admitted that the other individual who um, has who has come full, who uh, is now being considered for this, looked very similar to Corey Epps. That motion was denied, and Mr. Epps uh, remained in jail. Um, 
now we fast forward now 17 years to this, this February. Um, uh, this February, on February 21st, 2017, um, another motion was presented to this office and to the court saying that there is additional newly discovered evidence regarding this case. What my office did at that time was we conducted a thorough investigation of this matter. We pulled out the old file. We had my um, two people from my appeals bureau. I had my senior chief investigator and another investigator in my office who happened to be the homicide detective at the time back in 1997, um, who now works in my office, and they did a thorough re-examination of this case. They went out and spoke to and interviewed numerous witnesses. And after a thorough investigation, um, I consented to having a hearing. Um, I, I formally opposed the motion on paper, but I consented to have a hearing. Basically, when I'm presented with these type of motions here, I have th three choices. I can either grant the request outright based upon the paper and allow Mr. Epps to go free. That's option number one. Option number two is I can oppose the papers and oppose the hearing. That's option number two. Option number three is I can oppose it on the papers but consent to the hearing, which is what I did. Because I wanted to, ha I wanted to con conduct a hearing and basically make up my mind after the hearing was, was held. Um, yesterday, on uh, November 30th of 2017, the hearing was conducted. Uh, it was a sealed hearing. So I am precluded by order of the judge uh, and the rules from um, giving you any information as to what occurred at the hearing with respect to the new witness that came forward. <clears throat> and the new witness is a different, wi I can tell you this, the new witness is a different witness than the individual who wrote the anonymous letter back in 1998 and who then came forward with the affidavit back then as well. <clears throat> but the information that the new witness provided um, clearly showed that someone else is potentially responsible for his murder. <clears throat> that along, that in conjunction with the old evidence that I just laid out for you, um, the newly discovered evidence I got yesterday and the and was formulated based upon the February uh, motion papers and the old evidence that was already with, with us before, those two pieces together um, led me to the conclusion that um, Corey Epps, that there is not enough evidence to believe that Corey Epps is guilty of this murder beyond a reasonable doubt. And the fact that I no longer believe that Corey Epps, that there's enough evidence to show that he is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, I consented to the defense motion papers. <clears throat> And I consented to not only vacate the judgment that was issued back in 1998 with his uh, jury verdict, but I also consented to dismiss the indictment against Corey Epps. And Mr. Epps, after having served almost 20 years in jail, is now a free man today. Any questions? His defense mentioned that the tactics used to convict him back in the 90s, many of those would not be used today. Can you comment on that, or do you agree with that statement? Well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to agree with that. Um, um, here, here's my comment on that. Um, the, the, the attorneys in this office who prosecuted this case back in 1997 um, are some of the finest attorneys that I know. Um, there was no, nothing done improper back in 1997. The, um, they, had, they had an eyewitness. <clears throat> they, they, they had, and they still to this day have that eyewitness. Um, that, that, I mean, again, to be fair here, um, 
that eyewitness has not um, uh, changed her testimony. Um, uh, uh, we, we spoke to her this year. Um, she maintains that the person that she identified um, is Corey Epps. Um, um, however, though, I can tell you this. Well, well, I can't show you the photograph of the individual who we believe is responsible for this. The photograph of him and Corey Epps are eerily similar, like twins similar. Um, <clears throat> the, and again, just so you know, the individual who we now believe responsible is in jail on another homicide for 25 to life. Um, the, 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 eye, the eyewitness back in 1997, um, when, when she gave a physical description of the, of the shooter, she gave, you know, the size, the weight, the, you know, the height, um, what, what, what they were wearing, et cetera, et cetera. But she also, um, made a specific comment regarding, uh, bumps, uh, um, acne uh, on the side of his face. And... Corey Epps does not have any bumps on the side of his face. The individual who we believe is responsible has bumps on the side of his face. Um, so again, I want to clarify here that there was no improper conduct done by the prosecutor at all. They, they had an eyewitness um, um, who was literally in the car sitting next to in a passenger seat, the girl who was murdered in the driver's seat. Um, so they, they, they went forward with the evidence that they got, that they had, um, and a jury came back and, and found him guilty. Is that individual going to be tried for, for this crime? And can you give us the name of that individual? No, I can't give the name of the individual. Um, that, that's under further review. Uh, like I said, he's already serving 25 to life on another murder. Um, the, 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 the reason why this was sealed is because the individual who came forward um, is scared. <clears throat> and I'm gonna do whatever I can to protect that individual. So um, whether or not we go forward with a further trial or whether or not, whether or not I have enough evidence beyond a reasonable doubt um, um, to prosecute the individual who I believe is responsible Again, I can believe it all I want, okay? I mean, there's a difference between me believing it and me proving it beyond a reasonable doubt. Seems so, like his, sorry, Go seems ahead. like his alibi in terms of being at a Perkins, having the receipt, he was with his wife, seems like a solid one. Can you comment on why that may have been well, discounted? Well, it, it, it was a cash receipt. It wasn't a credit card, so it wasn't like he had a number on the bottom of the credit card that, that shows, you know, I got my credit card, you know, receipt, John Flynn, you know, number, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it was a cash receipt, and, um, um, you know, uh, I, you know, if you know, just again, playing devil's advocate here. Um, if um, if if you were at Perkins last night, okay, at four o'clock in the morning, and you and I were buddies, you could have gave me your receipt. There's no there's no way to prove that that was actually my. I mean, I, I had it in my possession, okay, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that I got it generally from Perkins. Um, uh, you could have given it to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I and from what I understand, um, they. Back 20 years ago, they interviewed all the, the waiters and waitresses at Perkins at the time, and none of them could remember anything. You know, there was a lot of people in the restaurant that night. You know, it was everyone coming for breakfast. I, I can't remember who came. You know, so no one could, no one had any real information 20 years ago. The, the waiters and waitresses on whether or not he was there or not. And so then his wife wasn't considered credible because of what you just described. Then. Obviously, I mean, I mean, his wife is his wife. You know. Mm -hmm. Maybe. John, you yeah. mentioned during the original investigation there was a sketch that was uh, drawn of Epps. Is that still something that's being used today, sketches? Uh, very, very rarely. I mean, uh, they, they, they are, but I mean, now we have, um, you know, now there's so much video around that, um, there, you know, there's normally, there's normally video. Um, but, but it, it, you know, in, in the case that there's no video available, um, um, uh, you know, yeah, there are sketches made. Yeah, I mean, if, if, here, t t this one is a good example. The uh, the, um, uh, from my understanding, the the, the fifteen year old at the at the Florida hearing, someone was was doing a sketch of that person. So yeah, sketches are done today, but 
in our 20 years later with our technology is not used as often. So is, is it still, I guess, in the courtroom, is it still a, a viable tool in the investigation? Well, they, 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 they really didn't need the sketch 20 years ago because they had the lineup now. Oh. Because, because, because they, remember, they, um, um, the sketch got disseminated to the community. Um, the aunt of the victim said, hey, that looks like someone I know. And, um, and then Corey Epps, um, he volunteered to appear in the lineup, saying, "Yeah, I, I didn't do anything wrong. I'll, I'll appear in the lineup," and um, and unfortunately, he was picked out of the lineup. Um, Does this, in your head, call into question in any way the use of, of lineups as, as a credible way to identify? No, 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 it, no, it, it doesn't. L l lineups are good. I mean, li li lineups are useful. Um, you know, they, they're 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 a useful tool to law enforcement. Um, the, the, you know, this is just a case um, where, you know, um, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of little pieces of, of information that, that, that obviously came to light over the course of the past 20 years. Um, uh, in the first few years, there were just a number of pieces of information, but, you know, just, it just wasn't enough to take it over the top, I don't think. Um, what, what we got in February and what we what we heard in the courtroom yesterday, that was enough to take it over the top. You know, this is hard for people to hear because he's been incarcerated for 20 years. Awesome. It's hard for the public to hear, and it's hard for him. What message would you have for him and his family today? And well, and you know, from it, 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 it's um, you know, I I um, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you how I how I can answer that. Um, I can answer that by what I felt last night, okay? I, um, I, I knew what my decision was gonna be last night at about five or six o'clock last night. <clears throat> Due to the fact that this was sealed, the mother of the victim hadn't been notified, okay? Because we couldn't notify her and let her know what was going on because it was a sealed proceeding. Um, you know, at five o'clock last night, um, I I told the judge, um, and, and again, let, let, let me let me also say this too. Um, judge Barnese handled this proceeding. Okay, Judge Barnese did a fantastic job here. He conducted a thorough hearing. He was open to all the evidence, uh, and I can you know he, he didn't get a chance to rule because I I consented ahead of time, but before he got a chance to officially rule. Um, but I could tell that he was sympathetic with the proceedings and with, with Mr. Epps. Um, and, um, you know, there was some discussion last night and, you know, and, and Judge Barnese and I agreed that, you know, how do we let him sit in night in jail another night? And I, I said to the judge, um, judge, we have to notify the mother here of Tamika Means. I can't let Mrs. Means find out about this on the TV cameras here. I mean, I, I, I it was her daughter who was murdered 20 years ago. I, I owe it to her to, to, uh, to talk to her and let her know what's going on here before she hears about it in the media. Um, so I, I sent a investigator and my victim witness advocate um, out, out to her, the last address we had last night and they, they sat in front of her house for hours last night waiting for her to come home, um, and they couldn't get a hold of her. Um, so uh, they finally got a hold of her this morning um, and, and, and talked and talked to her and let her know what was going on here before, before this morning. But how, how do you think that makes me feel when um, I'm at home in bed last night watching a football game, um, knowing that he's spending an extra night in jail because of this? Um, very difficult. Did she react to the mother of the victim? She, um, she, she, she's at a point now where, you know, her daughter's never coming back. Um, you know, she, she's lived with this for the past 20 years, and she knows um, that no matter, you know, no matter what happens here, you know, her, her daughter's never coming back. So, you know, she, she accepted. She doesn't want to see anyone in jail who didn't do this. She, she accepted. Um, uh, at least, at least conveyed to our to our people that um, she understood, um, uh, and that. Um, but you know, it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that her daughter's never coming home.
Were you able to temper that by telling her that you have somebody, a real suspect, or was that something you were able to Oh, yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't tell her name. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we couldn't tell her, just like you, you I, I, I told her exactly <laughs> what I'm telling you. I, I just, I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell her the name. I, I, I couldn't tell her, the, you, know, the, the, you know, the name of the witness who came forward, what the witness said, et cetera, et cetera. All I, all I could say to her was basically what I said to you, yeah. is that, um, that, you know, we have, you know, credible information now um again in conjunction with the past information that that core yes um is not guilty beyond a reasonable doubt so that had to make it a little easier yes. for, right you guys yeah. and your guys too at least it was yeah. kind of a good news bad yeah. news yeah. bad news good thing yeah yeah you're right exactly. she knows another person's under investigation yes yes and i and i believe they told her that yeah i think she also knows that there are persons in jail too i assume they told her that Else I've done? I know this case yeah. uh, today is obviously about about Epps, but any reason why the the suspect who you believe actually did this targeted Ms. Means? Did he know her? I can't. If, if I if I I can't tell you that because if I if I tell you that that'll <laughs> that'll lead perhaps lead to who the person is. What I don't want to I just don't want to give any information out that would. That would even lead to who that person is. So I'm sorry, I can't that. But one more question yeah. then on yeah. that: Did Mr. Epps have ties to Ms. Means? Uh, no, 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 um, no, no. The um, the uh, the eyewitness, um, in the, who's in a car with Ms. Means, uh, stated that um, she did not know who Mr. Epps was per se. But that she had seen him out and about on the east side. She had seen the different clubs and stuff uh, in the past. Not, not that night, but in the past. So she she knew who he was tangentially. But the the, the, path, the witness. But Ms. Means and Mr. Epps didn't have any no, relationship. No, no, no indication. Yeah, that. John, is it fair to say that without going into details, uh, the victim was targeted? It wasn't just a random shooter going out shooting people in cars. Um, <clears throat> was there some kind of reason that you can't discuss why she was targeted? Or, or could another person have been targeted? Well, the, 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 the last part, that last part there I definitely can't answer because because that because I, I have information regarding that, okay? But I can't comment on that specific last part because that would perhaps lead to the, the individual who, who's now in, in my in my sights, um, but I can tell you this. Um, I can tell you what happened originally. All right, back in '97, the the um, the the evidence showed that um, there was some type of road rage incident. Okay, that um, the the allegations, uh, the, the facts came out that um, uh, there were two cars involved, and. Um, Miss Means' car, and then the car of the the, the shooter, um, and there was some type of road rage incident involved. Um, this was a three per four trial, and uh, and then the, and then the, the shooter got out of the car and shot Miss Means. Just before the shooting, or the, 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 the before? Incident? Yes, just yeah, before. Be, yeah, before before the shooting. Before the shooting, um, um, I'm not sure how long how long before I. I, I think I remember reading, reading the file that um, uh, the you know someone cut someone off at some point and then they went a few blocks up. So it was a, a few blocks up further from my recollection of, of, of going through the file and then and then you know was, um, and then at, at the intersection of, uh, of East Elvin and Chelsea is where the, the the shooter got out of the car and uh, and ended up shooting uh, Miss Means. Is there a timeline for the new uh, the proceedings to begin with the new suspect? No, um, um, I, I'm in no hurry there because he's in jail. <laughs> um, so, uh, um, you, seem so no. pretty, you guys seem pretty sure that it's him that you got the right guy, then, right? I, I, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I firmly believe it. Yeah, I firmly believe it. Now, again, whether or not I can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt in a courtroom is a whole other story. Um, whether or not I can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt um, without, uh, you know. The, the, the new witness um, that that'd be problematic.
just the time itself in between the event and now is going to make it difficult. Right? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. It's made 20 years is a long time, and and uh, that that definitely plays a role in this too. All right, everybody. Thanks yeah. so much. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I'm interested in sketches. I just got to finish.